Welcome to this tutorial on how to create a piece of artwork in response to the photographer Andreas Lai. Um, and here you can see some of his work. Um, but before we do that, I just want to talk to you about how to find a good image to use. And when you go to Google Image Search, make sure you select Tools and over on the left hand side, the drop down menu choose large and that way you're ensuring you get a large image. Um, another way you can do it, if you find an image you like, you can click and drag that image into the search um, and occasionally you'll find that there will be larger versions of it on the web. So if you click large, you will find that they go from biggest to smallest. So your first image will tend to be a nice big image. Okay, right into Photopia. You'll notice I've already taken the background off a lot of people will tell you that the magic wand is the best way to go to a select a background. Um, I don't agree. The polygonal lasso tool is the only way to go. Clicking around the whole of your form with the polygonal lasso takes time, um, but it's by far the best way to do it. Right, now we go to um, creating our background. So we make sure we've selected a new layer. Um, go back to the wolf layer though, or the animal layer, and magic wand to make sure that you've got um, the background selected, and then go back to that layer, and I've already opened up a piece of Andreas Lai's work, so I can colour drop um, and get the exact colour for the background, and I go back to mine, click on the paint bucket, and I get the colour on its own layer, okay? Um, I want it to be on its own layer for reasons you'll see um, uh, in a minute. Okay, right. Next thing I need to do is choose a landscape to go behind to double expose. So I found this one on the internet. Um, selecting the whole thing, Control C or Edit Copy. Okay, go back to this one, Control V or Edit Paste. That's up to you. And then I stretch it. Not really a fan of stretching images, but sometimes you can get away with it. Um, and in this instance, I can. And I've got it just beyond where the wolf is, and then I drag it below the wolf. Okay, so the layer is below. I then click on the wolf layer, and just above the layer bar, you've got this drop down menu. I click on it and then use the down arrow on my keyboard to run through um, the different choices you've got until you get to overlay and you can see the two images working together quite nicely. Um, just going to double check that my landscape is nicely positioned right up to the edges of the wolf so I get as much tree in as possible and that really is it for the double exposed image but with some animals in Andreas's nice work um, you have um, a little bit of shadow by the feet. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting, uh, creating a new layer, sorry, and then I select the background on the background layer, just with the magic wand. And that means when I go to my uh, new layer and I zoom in, I can draw with a slightly darker tone with the brush. Um, and make sure that I don't go onto the animal's paw because it's just going up to the edge of the mask. Okay, now I'm about to run out of time here because Screencastify only allows me to um, video for five minutes. So I would spend a bit more time than I am here blending this out and making it look more like a proper shadow. Uh, but you can get the gist and then when I zoom out, it will look pretty much done, but you can do a better job with the uh, shadow around the feet, given a bit more time. Okay, thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope it helps.